Welcome back. I'm so excited to have this conversation with Dulce and, and um, Lana, a, a conversation that um, I know um, uh, carries a lot of weight um, and also very, very heavy stakes um, um, everywhere in the world. Um, and so let's jump right into it. Um, like our MCs just said, we know that more than half of the world is voting in 2024 um, in presidential elections. So not just at the local level, but that um, um, at, the, at the country level with uh, the, uh, the, the potential of really changing the politics of the world. What do elections and voting process and, and the voting process look like in each of your countries? Do say we start with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me here today to empower this incredible young woman in politics. I'm so glad because this is a topic that I'm really interested in and I think all of us must know about. So this 2024, the most important elections in Mexico for our new president was a crucial moment, especially because the country is facing significant challenges in terms of democracy and citizen participation. But it was also very exciting because for the first time, us as Mexican people were surely these presidential elections will be won by a woman. And in that, today Mexico has its first female president in their story, Claudia Sheinbaum, which definitely results in a great advance in gender equality and the progress of women by Mexico, who that is a characterized uh, country by the sexism that we live in. Also, the National Electoral Institute. Um, can you hear me? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Uh, the National Electoral Institute worked to make the elections fair and accessible to everyone. Um, however, concerns remain about misinformation and violence, which can affect participation, especially among young women. And that is why it becomes essential for us to inform ourselves, uh, get involved and exercise our right to vote. In addition, there are initiatives that promote civic education to empower new generations. For example, I became a youth conciliar in my city since the city council is issued a call for applications and they teach me everything I need to know about how politics is handled in my, within my community and how I can act as a public official. And because of this new information that we receive, the active participation of women in this process is vital, not only to make their voices heard, but also to inspire others to participate and contribute to the construction of a more equitable future. Thank you so much, and congratulations on on the on the on on your new president, um, Lana. Um, in, in anything that you'd like to share about the U.S. context? Yeah. So in the United States, the first Tuesday of each Monday is our election day, and this year we have a very important one because every four years we have our presidential election, and so this is a presidential election one for us. And so each election day, uh, voters can vote with their ballot, they can vote for members of Congress, state governors, local officials, and other officials in their state. And in the United States, we have a registration period, which allows each period to vote, each person to vote in person before election day. And then we also have in-person voting on the day of. And we also have a special system with our electoral college, which is what is taking place currently this year for our president. So we have, we have 50 states and each state is allotted electoral votes. And voters cast their ballots for electors who then vote on the president based on the results in each state. And so in most states, the candidate that wins the most popular vote in that state receives all the electoral votes the state has. And each state has, ha has an allocated number of votes based on the number of senators and representatives in the U.S. Congress. For example, Texas, which is the state I'm from, has 40 electoral points, while Hawaii, which is a smaller state, has four. And whichever president gets the most electoral votes will win the presidential election. So that is the unique kind of thing that's happening this year. You summarized it so well. It is a complicated um, um, process, and so I'm I'm so grateful that you were able to um, explain it in in, in um, simple terms. Um, I think that what what the 
Dulce, what, what you talked about was the importance of the of the female vote, but I think that we also underestimate the power of the of of our youth voting. Um, how engage our youth in the voting process in your respective countries? And what do you think prevents youth from participating even more in the in, in the voting process? La Lana, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So currently in the United States, youth are becoming increasingly involved in unique ways that honestly haven't been seen before. And us youth are making larger strides and making our voices heard. And civic engagement is extremely important for our youth because it's a way for us to have a, a say in the decisions being made. And honestly, a lot of decisions that are being voted on and a lot of policy and legislation that is passed really impacts our generation. And so for me, my generation is finally starting to see that and we have really been kind of up your engagement and there are a few barriers that prevent civil education especially within youth some specific barriers are like a lack of education which fosters a feeling of disconnect and especially for our youth because as you know y'all can see from before our process can be a little complicated so it's really important that we have youth that are aware of this and just kind of have them understanding of how our process works and so we can kind of prevent that feeling of disconnect and make sure that they're becoming more involved in the decision making process. Thanks Lana. What about on um in Mexico, Dulce? Okay. So in Mexico, uh, the participation of young people in the voting process has shown an increase in recent years, especially especially with the promotion of campaigns that seek to travel this sector of the population. Um, however, despite this growth, there are still significant barriers that limit their participation. One of the main obstacles that is distrust towards the political and electoral system. Many young people feel that their voices are not heard and that the system does not reflect their needs and concerns. Furthermore, uh, misinformation about electoral processes and candidates can generate apathy. And also, as Lana said, the lack of civic education plays an important role. Many young people are not sufficiently informed about the importance of their vote or how the electoral process works, which can discourage their participation. But on the other hand, practical difficulties such as access to the polls and lack of resources to travel can also affect participation. Um, however, social movements and digital platforms are working to empower young people, promoting the importance of their vote and facilitating uh, access to relatable information. But there are still many barriers to cross so that young Mexicans feel more attracted to getting involved in politic politics, but I think that little by little we are working on it. Thank you both, and 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 I think the what um, behind what the two of you are saying is also the 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 fact that too few of our youth understand the connection between politics and their lives day to day. Right? Who 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 decides um, for the funding of their schools? Who decides for the funding of their their roads? Who decides for the funding of of services that, that they need uh, daily. Uh, and so being able to create that connection is so important. Um, knowing that, what do you see in, in each of your countries um, are the um, um, efforts to increase youth civic participation? What do you think is the most effective way to really get uh, youth to the, to the uh, ballot box? Dulce, do, do you want to start? Yes. So the answer is yes. In Mexico, there are several efforts aimed to add increasing the civic participation of young people, but they are not always well known. Organizations such as Civic House and Mexico Participa are working to empower new generations through civic education campaigns, workshops, and events that encourage debate and discussions on relevant uh, political issues. Data platforms also play a crucial role because we all know that social networks have become a very well, very powerful tool to disseminate information about the electoral process, uh, the rights of voters, and also the importance of participating. And as for what is most effective in getting young people to vote, I think a combination of 
education and accessibility is key. Initiatives that provide clear and understandable information about the electoral process, along with opportunities for young people to engage in political dialogue, uh, can generate a sense of belonging and responsibility. And also, it is very important that young people see your concerns reflected in the candidates' platforms. When we feel that our voices and problems are taken into account, it is really more likely that uh, they will be motivated to vote. But that is, that is sometimes difficult to happen because the majority of politicians in Mexico are from past generations and that connection is not achieved. But that is also encourages us to actively participate in politics to gain control over the modern and truly relevant issues. Thank you, Dulce. What about you, Lana? What would you like to add? Yeah, I kind of wanted to piggyback off of that and just add to the fact that we really need to emphasize education and tackle the educational barrier. And there's also efforts within the United States that encourage youth to pre-register to vote and really embed civic education into our education system, which is kind of an issue right now. And so just having that is just a great way to make sure that our youth are more involved. And I would also like to add that civil engagement really intersects with gender equality because it's really important that girls in decision making are aware of the issues that we face right now. And as someone who competes in speech and debate and I do a lot of policy research and everything, girls are often seen as like less knowledgeable or less effective at certain issues. And there's also others who believe that women don't really have a place in policy making or it's a male-dominated field, and I feel like this really stems from the overall issue of girls being cut out of learning about the political and economic state of the world. And so when we promote the civic education, it's so crucial that we open up opportunities for girls to take charge of their own knowledge and their right to be included in policy making, and we need girls in more positions of power, and their perspectives are the only way for us to make inclusive decisions. And I believe that this really starts with civic engagement and encouraging girls to take on leadership roles in taking charge of their future. Let's go, Lana, 2050. Um, I um, wanted to ask the, the two of you in the last two minutes that, that we have, um, what is the hot button issue in each of your country? L Lana, why don't yeah. you go first? Some of the hottest topics in the United States right now include reproductive rights, gun control, climate change policy, and healthcare reform. And especially when it comes to abortion rights and bodily autonomy, many voters see this as an important voting issue that can decide their vote. And with gun violence, we have had a lot of increased school shootings. So it's really important that we push for policy that protects as many lives as possible. Mm -hmm. What about in Mexico, Dulce? Well, in Mexico, obviously, the fight for gender equality and the protection of women's rights, especially because at this moment we are governed by a woman. We hope to see better results in this regard, and young women in particular are demanding actions against gender violence and promoting policies that support equity. Mm -hmm. I am so impressed at the way that the two of you can talk about such complex, complex um, processes in your in your own countries um, and uh, just how passionate you are about this um, issue. It, it gives me so much hope for uh, for the future um, and being able to see more youth votes um, to really shape the our political landscape. And so with that, I want to thank you, thank the two of you for um, spending your, your, your evening, afternoon with us. Um, and I will turn it back to our MCs. Thank you so much.